Hey, welcome back. And you've tuned in to an episode of Unscripted Duff. This is where I just respond to a current headline. Something that's just happened. And what are my first thoughts on that? And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take a look at this uh, announcement. Oh, maybe like five or six maybe hours old at this point from Lee Berger and his uh, associates. Uh, about Homo naledi, the latest findings about Homo naledi. Remember, Homo naledi are these enigmatic fossils from uh, deep in a cave, the Rising Star ca uh, Cave in South Africa. And they've been described as a species of Homo. Uh, and there's just been a lot of mystery involved with them. And some of that mystery has been potentially resolved with some new findings, which we will explore in just a few minutes. Now, in particular, we're going to look at the three papers that were published today. Actually, they're not peer-reviewed papers. They are pre-papers or pre-print papers on the biological pre-print server. But that allows us to get a glimpse of the types of things that they're doing and they are trying to get published. We'll take a look at the abstracts just to give you an idea of like, hey, what's this all about? What have we learned? But I'm most interested in what's the response of this new evidence? What's the response going to be by young earth creationists? Because I've talked a lot about young earth creationists and their response to this particular fossil location, these, this particular set of fossils in the past. So back in 2017, I made a number of predictions about young earth creationist responses and future responses to Homo naledi future findings, right? And here we've got some of those findings that have finally come out. And I'm going to take a look at the things that I said they would say and how they would respond years ago. And I'm going to make some more predictions about what they're going to say about these current findings. I know that sounded a little confusing. What we'll do is we'll start with, I will show you how young earth creationists responded to the first news of Homo naledi. And then we'll take a look at these new results and discuss. So we've got that coming right up. Okay, I said this is unscripted duff. I did throw together a couple slides and I have a couple links. Other than that, which yeah, we're gonna see where this is go, where this goes. I mean, anything can happen, right? Who knows what's gonna come out of my mouth? But I do have a good idea of what I where I want to start. Okay, and where I want to start is with this figure. Right? I made this table a number of years ago, you see it as uh, 2017. In 2017, I compiled this set of reactions from Young Earth Creationist organizations to the discovery of Homo naledi. So as I titled this, Young Earth Creationist Assessment of the Physical and Spiritual Status. So physical status, what, what do they think these uh, organisms are, and what is their spiritual status? In other words, how are they related to Adam and Eve? That would be the concern of a Young Earth Creationist. So how did they respond? So I've got four different groups here of Young Earth Creationists. I have Answers in Genesis, Institute for Creation Research, Creation Ministry, Creation Ministries International, that's the, the three biggies, right? The three big apologetics uh, groups uh, that promote Young Earth Creationism. And then I have a, a much smaller group called the Core Academy of Science, which is run by Todd Wood, but is also kind of represents a number of, so we'll call them independent Young Earth Creationists, all right? And they represent sort of four major uh, reactions to the fossils of Homo naledi. All right, so what we really all we had to do is get to, like, what did they think that Homo naledi was? You have to remember, young earth creationists are faced with uh, a world in which they are constantly barotted by new pieces of data. And what they are doing is they're trying to place those pieces of data in the framework or the worldview of this uh, young earth, right? That the world is only 6,000 years old and there was a global flood about 4,000 years ago. And humankind was reduced down to just eight individuals on Noah's Ark only 4,350 years ago. And since all humans were destroyed in the flood, any evidence of human beings, right, since the flood have to be descendants of Noah's family. Right? So essentially, all of the human fossil record are descendants of Noah. And so the question, every time any new fossil is found that is claimed to be something 
in the lineage of Homo or related to modern human beings, young earth creationists are faced with a dilemma. They must choose, all right? Is this a direct descendant of Adam and also of Noah? Or is this not human being at all? In other words, it's a, it's a descendant of some kind of ape. And for answers in Genesis, they place all of the great apes together in one kind of organism. God created one kind of great ape that became the various great ape species, including all the different fossil species that they declare are not human beings. If you're put into two piles, you're either a human being and you're a essentially a modern human being, closely related to all of us, or you're just an ape, right? There isn't anything in between. And so any young earth creationist feels this compulsion to, uh, for their audience, right, who, who hear these big stories on the news, like today, all over Twitter and Facebook and New York Times and so forth, there are stories being uh, coming out about this new evidence from Homo the Lady. And young earth creationist, uh, the, the average person who follows young earth creationist is surely going to be asking questions of expert young earth creationist how they should respond to this particular evidence. How do they interpret that evidence? So what we're doing is we're just to frame like what's happening today, we need to go back and look at in the past, 2017, what did these organizations say? So answers in Genesis, let's start with them. Their primary conclusion, we don't need to beat around the bushes here, right? Let's just get right to it. Answers in Genesis came out and told their audience, hey, those fossils, those hundreds of fossils representing multiple individuals from um, uh, very young individuals all the way up to adults, all of those individuals found in that particular cave are just fully ape. They're just apes. They're unfortunate apes that happen to wander into the very back recesses of this um, as, cave, got stuck there, died, and their bones have remained since. They're only about 4,500 years old, right? So are they descendants of Adam and Eve? That's the, that's the spiritual status of them. Well, no, of course, they're just soulless creatures, right? And here's the pertinent quote. So from the literature that I've read of young earth creationists at the time, here's the thing that most represents their viewpoint. We seriously doubt that the original owners of the uh, Denlady Bones, that's the, the name of the, uh, the location, um, were among the descendants of Adam and Eve, as the preponderance of evidence suggests that they were animals, one of the variations that developed among apes, right? So they're just apes, and they're a variation of ape. So despite some evidence of potential upright walking and some other features that were very homo-like or human-like in these, in these um, remains that were found. I believe that Answers in Genesis looked at the initial reports in which there wasn't any evidence of tools, there wasn't any evidence of artwork, there wasn't any evidence of fire being used in order to get to the back of this cave. And there wasn't any direct evidence of burial. All right? In other words, there was, a, there was no evidence of any kind of culture for these particular animals, right? It's just a set of bones. And so I think that they looked at that and they just jumped to a very quick conclusion that despite some of the morphological aspects of the, the anatomy, right? Anatomical characteristics of some of the bones that were human-like, there was also enough characteristics of some of those bones that were ape-like that combined with the lack of any kind of cultural significant objects they just tossed this particular fossil find into the fully ape category. And for a number of years, they've been promoting that view. And, and they're very, they sound very confident when they say it. They don't, they're not, they're, you know, this particular quote makes it sound like, well, we doubt it and the preponderance of evidence. You now, maybe they'll go back to that quote now and they'll say, well, we, we didn't exactly, we didn't like put our foot down and say this is the way it has to be. But I can tell you, in hearing them talk about it, they sound very confident that this is just an ape. They've been telling their audience, that's certainly what their audience has come to believe, is that these bones just represent some variant of an ape. Now let's contrast that with Institute for Creation Research. Right? The Institute of Creation Research, Tim Clary, uh, and oh, I should I should point out, 
Who was the author who wrote about this? Well, it was Elizabeth Mitchell. She's the one that was sort of charged by Answers in Genesis with making their response, right? Here's our position on the physical and spiritual status of homo lady. And uh, she is a, a, a medical doctor. And eventually genomics, which is a pseudonym, and he's an independent scholar, of which I'm not exactly sure what his background, he eventually also wrote an article later in which he embraced this idea that they're fully human based on some statistical analysis of bones. So now we have Tim Clary, who has a PhD in geology. So we have a geologist writing about these bones. And ICR comes up with this. They're imaginary creatures resulting from a mixture of fully human and eight bones. Scientists have either been duped or are making fraudulent claims. Now, what, what ICR saw in the release of the information and the papers that came out about Homo lady was, oh boy, they clearly have some anatomical features that are more human-like than they are ape-like. But there are other bones that are part of this collection of 1500, the original 1500 bones that were, were um, announced. There are some of those bones that are much more ape-like. And so it was going to be really hard to decide, is this an ape or is this a human? Because remember, with creationists, they, they, it has to fall one way or the other, right? There's no intermediate creatures, so therefore it has to be one or the other. And yet they had, if you looked at one part of the anatomy, it was human, another part of the anatomy, it was ape. And so they simply just, well, this is an imaginary creature. This is a mixture of fully human and ape bones. And they suggested something like that. There was apes and humans living in the same area, and they both had individuals that died in this particular cave, and maybe these bones got washed down and mixed together. Now, this was a ridiculous claim, even right from the start. The very first information that came out about this showed that there was completely articulated hands and arms and legs in which we had, we knew what the bones were placed next to each other. So some of those bones that are human-like are in connection with other bones as part of the same individual that were more ape-like. And to say they were just mixed together bones or imaginary creature was a completely ludicrous claim from day one. Um, in the quote from Clary, the claimed new species appears to be a mosaic of different species put together based on evolutionary basis. In other words, they seem to have believed that they found a bunch of bones and they kind of pieced them together. And because they have an evolutionary bias and they think that there's an intermediate creature between apes and humans, they kind of stitch these bones together to make it seem like there's a menagerie of the two, like this would be a great intermediate species. Um, but that completely defied what was actually seen. I mean, the, the, the fact is that this particular individuals that were found there have weird combinations of characteristics, which are hard to explain. Um, the scientists built an imaginary creature from bones that likely came from both humans and non-humans. I don't know any other young, young Earth creationist of any of these other groups that has ever acknowledged that Institute for Creation Research has any claim, any claim to validity here, right? That no one thinks that this was a good idea or a good explanation. Um, now, I will say that Institute for Creation Research has, in recent years, I, I looked it up and they have been more likely now to claim it's just fully ape. So they've kind of climbed on board. They've gotten on board with the answers in Genesis view, right? So they relatively quickly abandoned this first idea that it's a menagerie, an imaginary creature, and they just pushed it all the way over into the fully ape column. So what we have is we've got these two groups here that are saying, oh, if you look at these fossils, of which there's many, many, many that are publicly available for you. You could download the, the 3D images of these things and you could study them for yourself. And some of these folks have, like genomics has done that, has looked at some of the anatomical structures, all right, the bones, and come to the conclusion, eh, just apes. Now, Creation Ministries International, all right, they had a Dr. Peter Line, who is a PhD in neuroscience, take a look at the evidence that had been presented by Berger and, and uh, colleagues. And he came to the conclusion representing the position of Creation Ministries International, right? He's the one that was charged to sort of like, look at this stuff, figure this out for us. Probably human, but with pathological features. So here's a, yet another hypothesis for a young earth creationist. 
eh, these are probably human. There's too many human-like characteristics for us to completely go with the fully ape version of things. This looks like on balance, there are more human-like features to this creature, to the, to the anatomy of these, the anatomical features of these, of these bones, than there are not. And so therefore, we're going to go with it's human. It's, it's a descendant of Adam and Eve. In fact, it's even a descendant of Noah after the flood. But there's also weirdness to them, right? So how can we explain some of these more ape-like traits? Well, maybe this was a population of individuals living in this area that all were inflicted by some genetic anomaly, right? They had some genetic, inherited genetic disease, all right, that uh, made them more shorter in stature and then had some bone abnormalities. And, and so we can explain away some of the, the weird features of their anatomy that were more ape-like by simply appealing to some mutations, all right? Maybe they could claim genetic entropy or something like that in a small population. These genomes were falling apart and they were becoming kind of just really weird uh, offshoots of modern humans. But still fully human in the sense that they have the image of God, they're descendants of Noah and so forth, but probably doomed to extinction. And, and in fact, they are extinct. So what's the quote for them? Uh, can homo lady be human? As discussed earlier, most of the features that are said to be primitive in homo lady are still within the human variation, whether it be modern humans or robust humans, like Homo erectus or Heidelbergensis or Neanderthals, right? Which they think are also just humans, right? Variants of human beings, descendants of Noah's family. And so therefore, we're just going to lump them um, with those groups and say that, yeah, they're just a little more unusual and that, that unusual feature is a pathological feature. So what about core academy of science? All right, Todd Wood, Kurt Wise, and genomics. You notice we had genomics over here too. His first study by genomics, his first publication, he thought that they were fully human. And then he did some more studying, more work. I think he got his arm twisted by Andrews and Genesis, a few folks over there to take a look, a little closer look. And he flipped sides, okay? He flipped over to, well, when I analyze it in this way, I do the statistical analysis in this way, I find that they're not as human as I thought. And so he went from saying that they're descendants of Adam and Eve, have the image of God, have souls, to casting their souls aside, saying they're not human beings and not related to Adam and Eve, but yet, and they're, but they're actually related to, to apes. You see how there's... You see how difficult it is to look at bones, young earth creationists, to look at bones? I mean, I know that Ken Ham likes to say that uh, it's easy to tell the difference between what is an ape, descendant of an ape, and what is a human being, what is a descendant of Adam and Eve. But here we have young earth creationists looking at the same set of bones and coming to completely different uh, decisions, right? So uh, Todd Wood, Kurt Wise, and so forth, they have claimed that this is just a variant of human beings and is fully human. The results continue to support inclusion in early Homo and the human holobarum. That's just their taxonomic name for uh, everything related to uh, modern humans. Also placed with confidence in the human holobarum. All right, so we think that Homo lady can be placed with confidence there. So they're confident in fully human. Answers in Genesis is confident. This is just an ape. So that's where we were in 2017, and that's kind of where we stayed for a solid five years, All right? Then we had, uh, a year ago, we had this announcement uh, from Lee Berger and, and his colleague and other colleagues that they had discovered evidence that, uh, that there was fire use in these caves. And you might think that that might have had Answers in Genesis or Institute for Creation Research rethinking their assessment of the physical and spiritual status of homo lady but really i don't there wasn't a whole lot of that didn't really make huge news and the thing with young earth creationists is if it didn't make big news that means the average person or the average person in the pew didn't really hear about this and so there isn't any compulsion for young earth creationists to respond right leaders to respond because um why bring up difficult topics when you don't have to Honestly, homo lady is a kind of a thorn in the side uh, for young earth creationists because it is so apparent that they can't really figure out what's going on here. They don't, they don't have consensus, right? 
And so it's kind of easier just to not talk about them. I've read multiple papers in which young earth creationists analyze um, human fossils and talk about them and human history and how to understand the human fossil record and just completely ignore these fossils over the last couple of years, right? So don't really want to deal with them, right? So the fire thing kind of came and went without really causing any young earth creationists to go like, let's reevaluate our position, right? Just kind of what you do in science, right? You, I'm, I'm confronted with new pieces of evidence. Does that make me go back and rethink my, my original hypothesis? Is it still supported? Or um, is something about this new evidence caused me to go back and say, I need to tweak my hypothesis? In the case of young earth creationists, it's a pretty big tweak though, because you really only care about one hypothesis. Are they human, descendants of anatomy, or are they apes? That's the only question you wanna answer. There's really no other mystery for them. There's no other intrigue. It's all about just getting to that answer because they just need that answer. All right, we've set the stage. We've set the stage for the newest discovery. And now the question is, will this, will, will what was revealed today end up changing anyone's mind? And you're wondering, whose minds need to be changed? Because probably one of these four, actually it's really three different opinions, one of these three different positions is probably going to be supported and the other ones are going to have, find themselves with less support than they had before. So who won <laughs> with respect to uh, future predictions? Now before I get to this, I, I want to tell you, I made some predictions when I made this chart and I've talked about it and I've written about it. And one of my predictions was, is that I thought answers in Genesis and eventually Institutes for Creation Research put themselves in a very dangerous position um, with respect to their audience and their reputation. Um, by going in full with the fully ape position, uh, not based on a whole lot of evidence, based on the lack of evidence that they're human beings, Right? That's really what they did. They said there's, there is a lack of evidence of things we might want to see if they were human. On the other hand, these are long-term studies in which lots more investigation was going on, and they knew that. They knew this was going to take 10 years to even come close to like fully exploring this particular site. There's going to be a lot more digs. They knew they were going to find a lot more fossils, and there was always going to be the opportunity, always going to be the opportunity they would find tools that they would find possibly artwork, that they would find possibly evidence of burial, right? Other things suggesting that the individuals, the remains of these individuals represented a population that had uh, characteristics or cultural features that would cause young earth creationists to reconsider because they would they have different view, well, they have different ideas of what it means to be made in the image of God. Right. And so they place themselves in the position of working with negative data and coming to a strong conclusion that they can't be humans because they didn't find this yet. They didn't say yet, but that's what I said. They haven't found it yet. But what if they do find it? You're going to be wrong. And the core Academy of Science, which came out and said, we think there's enough evidence these are fully human. We're not bothered by the fact that we haven't found other features that we might expect to find with individuals that are descendants of Adam and Eve. But we do know that the authors of this original uh, investigation um, strongly suspect that this was a burial site. And for us, we're convinced that that is a reasonable hypothesis. And that pushes us toward the, these are probably human versus most likely ape. Whereas Answers in Genesis comes in with a very skeptical attitude. They, like, they, they think that everyone is reading into all the data things that they want to make them into humans. And their gut reaction is to kind of run away from that kind of stuff, right? And they, just th they think they're just, I'm just looking at the data. I see some characteristics that are not human in these bones. And therefore, and I don't see anything else. So therefore, I'm just going to throw them in the ape category. Right, you know where this is going. I mean, do I really need to, I, I, you know, there's no reason to keep a secret any longer, right? And you've probably heard the word. 
the word is, is that Lee Berger and, call, and his colleagues, and, and this is many colleagues, many people working on this over a period of years, have done the detailed work to show that it's very, very likely, I, I find the evidence pretty compelling for the burial part of what they've discovered, that there are burial sites in these caves. Right? There's multiple locations that they've discovered where there are remains of Homo lady within this cave system. Before it was just one at the time, but now there's multiple sites. Um, there was always some oddities about how the bones were found and how they were sort of laid out sometimes on, on, on rock ledges and things like that. That didn't seem like that would be a accidental thing. But now they've discovered that by very carefully digging through the layers of sediment and carefully over a large area, noting all the different uh, layers of sediment, that it's pretty clear that there are sections that were dug out in the cave. There are layers of sediments of different compositions, but they're interrupted. And so you might have a layer going across the bottom of the cave, but there's a section where those layers stop, and then there's a whole jumble of stuff. And inside of that jumbled up sediment, right, unlayered sediment, there's a whole set of bones that represent bones of a single individual, right? Not a random assortment of multiple individuals all together or, or random bones, but, another, but a set of bones inside of this unlayered region. And once you map it out, what you discover is there's a little section there that looks like it's been dug out. So the layers have been dug out, put aside, bones have been set in there, and you took the material there and you put it back in. But when you put it back in, of course, it's not in layers anymore. Right? That seems like, I think that's very strong circumstantial evidence of intention, right? Intentional burial, intentional burial. That those bones came to rest there via an individual that is intentionally doing this. And so that's the newest evidence, one of the pieces of newest evidence that came out. All right. Now that fits with the things that Todd Wood and Kurt Wise and so forth were saying about these fossils. And they thought just from the location and the difficulty getting to it that this wasn't accidental. Right. That seemed like the most parsimonious, the simplest explanation all the way back in 2017. And this is why Lee Berger had proposed, even as wild as it sounded, that uh, from the evolutionary perspective, even that uh, a, a, an animal or a human being or, you know, I guess we'll call it hominid. This would be the better word. 300,000 years ago. Right. That's their dating uh, of this the, of the timeline that that long ago there were individuals and populations that were participating in this kind of activity. And that is a surprise to the evolutionary biology community or the anthropological, anthropological community um, at the time. And so that was hard to kind of like fully embrace because that was an idea of like just based on, it just appears that that's the simplest explanation for how those bones got where they are and why they're in the positions they're in at the time. But now, five years later, they've done more detailed analysis and they, what they're doing is they're providing a lot more evidence that that, in fact, is the best explanation for that data. All right, for what they, are, for what they initially saw. Okay, like I said before, there are three papers that today were uploaded to the uh, biology preprint server. Now, these are papers that have not been reviewed yet or peer-reviewed yet. Right, as you can see here, uh, which was not served by peer review. Uh, so these are being made public. So the public can see like these are manuscripts that have been written that they intend to submit to a journal and have it peer reviewed. And so some of the information here might change as reviewers look at it and say, no, I have further questions or I need you to add more data here, or I think this is incorrect and you need to, to think about this more, right? I mean, it's going to go through a process. I doubt that it'll change a whole lot. Um, this is, they knew these were going to be heavily scrutinized. 
many, many, many people are going to look at this. So it was it would be foolish of them to be um, it would have been foolish for them to just throw this stuff together and hope it's OK. Right. They've spent a lot of time. A lot of individuals looked over this a, 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 a quite a bit, I'm sure. And so that's why I think it will probably get through peer review and end up being published in some form very similar to this. But I just need to say that I need to let you know this isn't peer reviewed at this point. Um, it appears they did that this way because there's uh, there's a book coming out and there's some kind of other um, uh, special show, all right, TV show uh, based on uh, the Home on the Lady, and so it would be good to have more information out about before then. So the, apparently the peer review process wasn't quite going to finish in time, so they're just releasing them to the public as they are. So first paper here, burials and engravings in a small brain hominid. Right, they're going to emphasize the small brain part because Homo lady has just a little over a third of the size of modern humans or Homo sapiens. So a very small brain, not a lot larger than, say, um, some apes. Data from the recent explorations in the cave system illustrate one of the earliest examples of a mortuary practice in hominids. So they are claiming this is the very earliest, the oldest evidence of mortuary practice. Offers the earliest evidence of multiple interments. So they found not just one, but they found multiple places where they believe that they can provide enough evidence to convince you that these are interments. As well as funerary actions. There's a couple, there's an item found in one of these graves, which looks like it is intentionally placed there as well as evidence for the early creation of meaning-making by a human. The hominin undertaking these behaviors was the small-brained homo lady. Now, these data call into question several key assumptions about behavioral and cognitive evolution in Pleistocene humans. The evidence from Delaney pushed back the temporal origins of mortuary and funerary behaviors and association and creation of meaning-making. That's going to be the artwork. So there's another, they announced a bunch of stuff today. And the other thing is they found something that they think is art. I'll show you a couple of pictures. You can decide whether it's art or not. This suggests that the homo socio-cognitive niche and its relationship and its relation to meaning-making activities is more diverse than previous thought. They only mean that we're now seeing uh, different types of behaviors and cultural practices amongst a wider degree of different fossil variant species. Right? The association of these activities in subterranean spaces accessed and modified by these small brain species, Homo lady, impacts assertions that technical and cognitive advances in human, human evolution are associated solely with the evolution of large brains. I mean, that's, that is an important potential conclusion from this is that here are these, these individuals of Homo lady have very small brains and yet seem to have been capable of different kinds of cultural practices that have normally only been associated with much larger brained organisms. I don't want to spend a huge amount of time on this. I'm not an expert in this particular area. I'm sure that there's going to be others that I know that will cover this in much greater detail. My reaction, again, is about the response by young earth creationists, right? That's what I'm going to be mostly focused on. But I just have to give you an idea of what has been found there. So 241 to 335,000 year old rock engravings. That's approximately the period that this cave was uh, inhabited by a uh, homo lady. That's the, the roughest, that's the, sorry, that's the estimate of the age. It's kind of broad. That's because of the types of techniques that have to be used to try to date rocks from inside the caves are not terribly precise. Um, but let's just say it's not real young, but it's also not millions of years old. And we get down here, we find, what did they find? The production of painted, etched, or engraved designs on cave walls or other surfaces is recognized as a major cognitive step in human evolution. Such intentional designs, which are widely interpreted as, signif as signifying recording and transmitting information in a durable manner, once considered exclusive to late Pleistocene Homo sapiens. Right? Now, of course, there's been also evidence more recently of Neanderthals able to do have these kinds of engraved designs, uh, and possibly Homo erectus. Right? So there's other Homo that have some possible associations with engraved designs. 
There's other homo for which we have no evidence thus far. Um, here we present the first known example of abstract patterns and shapes engraved within the Denality subsystem of the rising star cave in South Africa. We identified markings incised in the dolomite limestone walls of the cave. The engravings described here are deeply impressed cross hatchings and other geometrical shapes. The surfaces bearing these engravings appear to have been prepared and smoothed. In some areas, there is a residue that created a sheen on the surface, possibly indicating repeated handling and rubbing of the rock. And there's also evidence of the application of dirt or sand to the surface by non-natural processes. So not only was the surface potentially prepared before making the engravings, but after the engravings were made, there was some kind of something applied to that. Like they might have smeared something on the engravings themselves, maybe changing the texture or look of them. Now, Homo Laity entered this part of the cave system and buried bodies. That's the other evidence from the other paper that they buried obvious, buried bodies there within both these, uh, this chamber and the other chamber, both of which are on either side of where these engravings are, right? The engravings described here are found on a pillar in the antechamber, which extends into the natural fissures corridor that links the two chambers that we associate with Homo Laity. There's never been any evidence of any other type of human or hominid population that has ever occupied this particular cave. Uh, and it's really difficult to access. And so maybe potentially in the way in the past, it was more easily, easily accessed. And so this is one of the reasons they're associating that artwork, which appears to be the same kind of age as the other things and that are in that particular cave system, right? the bones and so forth. And so here they are having to infer that this was Homo Lady that actually made these. But of course, no one was there to actually see them making these etchings, but it's not an unreasonable inference. Um, yeah, this is the chamber system. Lots of work's been done there. So we've got these, I don't, uh, it's not the most dramatic thing you've ever seen, but when you consider that these might be the oldest intentional markings. Um, it's fairly interesting. Nobody has any idea, of course, what exactly they're trying to signify by doing this. Um, but here's the various, uh, it's, it's not natural. And they, I've read through this paper, skimmed through it, and they talk about the type of rock that's here and the type of fissures that normally develop in the rock and how this type of rock normally erodes. And I'm totally convinced this is not, um, a natural process that creates these particular lines. So you have these various lines and intersections and the various angles they're found at. Uh, and some of the other scratchings appear to be attempts to make the appearance of something. I don't know what, but um, this would be some kind of intentional uh, signage artwork represents, symbolizes something or informs the viewer of something uh, in that particular cave. And so that is something that was not known in 2017 when Answers in Genesis just immediately proclaimed these are just apes found in this cave. What happens now when Answers in Genesis looks at this, if they do look at it, and they realize that, wait a second, there's uh, some kind of form of intentional um, manipulation of the rocks there, all right, with tools. There is an actual stone tool-like instrument found buried with one of these, uh, in one of these burial sites that appears to be etched, having some kind of design on it. Not only is it etched, but it's a, a tool, right, that's an extension or a, gives them, that's, that's an, an ability, right, that is beyond most other organisms. And then you combine that with the ability to make fire, right? So there is a charcoal -y material on the roofs of these caves now that's been discovered, uh, along with uh, charcoal layers in the, in the sediments themselves and pieces of charcoal that are broken off. And this is fire that's been brought very far back in the cave. So that would seem to also be a form of technology, right? Uh, for these things. So you start putting all these things together and it sure starts to make these 
homolalady individuals seem a lot more human-like. All right, a lot more homo-like. So evidence for deliberate burial by the dead um, by homolalady, Lee Berger, John Hawks, and a whole bunch of other people. And there's all the institutions. And let's just read the abstract quickly so we can be done here. Um, recent excavations of the Rising Star Cave System in South Africa have revealed burials of the extinct hominid species Homo lady. A combination of geological and anatomical evidence show that hominids dug holes that disrupted the subsurface stratigraphy and interred the remains of Homo lady individuals, resulting in at least two discrete features within the Homo lady chamber and the hill antechamber. These are the most ancient interments yet recorded in the hominid record. Uh, earlier than evidence of Homo sapiens in terms by at least 100,000 years. So from a conventional dating perspective, this is a very radical finding. It's saying in a, a cousin species, a distantly related species to what um, anthropologists believe is modern human beings or Homo sapiens origins, that there is another species that has small brains, only just over four feet tall, uh, has characteristics of being able to climb really well in trees, but also can stand upright, has a bunch of really odd characteristics that are both really primitive in terms of like they're only found in really ancient samples or ancient uh, um, specimens. They're millions of years old. Characteristics that are ape-like or chimpanzee-like. And then characteristics that are really well developed and have more human, very modern human type traits to them. So adaptations that are also adaptations that modern humans have. So a really wild mix of characteristics in this organism. And now also a mix of characteristics of cultural capacity. And that makes the discoveries that were announced today so important. So we'll end by just coming back to this chart. I said earlier that a while back, ICR and Answers in Genesis for at least the last four years now, oh, actually five or six years now, have been simply listing Homo lady as an ape, a descendant of apes related to the ape kind and having no relationship to Adam and Eve, not human at all. Whereas Creation Ministries International had from the beginning thought that these were actually descendants of Adam and Eve and simply had some pathological features. Core Academy of Science and a bunch of other independent young earth creationists, many of whom Answers in Genesis calls the young earth evolutionists because of their aptitude for um, incorporating what they think is too many evolutionary ideas. And of course, I've quibbled with that per perception, but that's that's how they would put it. And Answers in Genesis has never been very happy about, uh, you know, CMI and, and, and Todd Wood's views of Homo lady and them trying to, like, you know, broaden out what makes a human a human and make them way more diverse than what Answers in Genesis thinks. But it looks to me like Answers in Genesis and Institute for Creation Research are going to have, um, they've got a little bit of a, they're in a little bit of a predicament here, Right. What are they going to do? Now, I predict what they're going to do is first, they're going to try to ignore this, right? They're going to hope this blows over. They're going to hope that, um, hey, it doesn't really make a whole lot of news and nobody really asks them about it, in which case they don't have to write about it. They're pretty good at ignoring difficult data. But if it rises to the level of too many people are asking questions, I'm going to raise this question. I am going to mention it several times. And so that might cause them to be asked about it. Then they're going to have some soul searching to do. Right? They're going to have to decide what's our approach. I think the first approach they're going to take is kick the can down the road, right? Very good at this as well. The kick down, kick the can down the road approach is this. Well, okay, sure. There's there's some art. There's something that looks like art there. That's intentional line drawing on the walls. But how do you know that was by Homo and Lady? How do you know that was done by the fossils you found. Maybe that was somebody came into the cave later. A modern human came into the cave later 
a thousand years later and they made those marks. Can you prove that didn't happen? And I can hear it now. Were you there? Like, were you there to see it? Well, no, you weren't. So how do you know? Right. So that doesn't change anything. Right. We're saying we can we can ignore that evidence until you prove it. Of course, they know that anthropologists can't ever prove this. Right. I think even if they found a fossil of 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 an arm holding a rock, all right, implement, and it's it's touching the wall in one of those grooves, like it's making a scratch, and that's where it died, and it like froze there, and we see it making that art. Even then, answers in Genesis could say, well, that was staged. Or they don't want to say it's staged. They could say, eh, that's just. You know, that doesn't mean that the, that it made all of that. It just happened to have a rock in its hand right then. Right. You can always explain away the data. The thing is, we're, we're, we're interested in what's the simplest explanation for what we're seeing. Well, the simplest explanation for what we're seeing is that that artwork, which appears to be roughly the same age based on the aging of the rock itself and the age of the soil and the, 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 that the, uh, the bones are found in. They were formed around the same time. So it makes sense that the organisms that we have evidence were there were the ones that probably made that artwork. I'll admit, that's not proof, right? That, that, that's circumstantial evidence. But what we're doing here is we're saying there's a whole bunch of different circumstantial evidence for a bunch of different things. And the collective sum of all of that certainly does seem to be pointing toward hominids that we're doing a lot of things all right now the burial thing is probably even better right the burial evidence i i looked at and it seems pretty strong um once again answers in genesis icr especially icr i mean if they're willing to call them imaginary creatures and think that scientists have just duped us and they're faking the data I mean, did they not realize that they had video coverage there and they were doing live broadcast and showing the world as they're collecting this stuff? All right. Like, how do they fake all this? I mean, you might as well say we fake the moon landing and all that if you're going to go that far, if you're going to be that much of a conspiracist. But AIG and ICR, I suppose they might be tempted, even with the burial stuff, to suggest that, yeah, maybe those are apes. But maybe some other human beings found those bones of apes and maybe they got tricked. Maybe they thought that they were fellow humans because they weren't anatomists, right? They're not anthropologists and they didn't quite recognize the differences. And so they saw these bones. They're like, they deserve a burial. And so they dug a pit and they put the bones in there and covered them up. Right. So it wasn't actually Homo lady that did the burial. And once again, they're going to say, were you there? Like, did you actually see homo lady bury another homo lady? How do you know it wasn't another species that buried the bones of homo lady? And I would say, I can't know that. Although I don't think that's a, that is a, that is a possible explanation. It's just not a very likely explanation, right? Not likely at all. And then you have the fire. The same excuses could be made by interest in justice and ICR. So let's stop there. The point is, is that if ICR and AIG want to dig in, they can use all the types of arguments in their repertoire that help them avoid obvious evidence of the age of the earth being really old and all the other things that potentially are in conflict with their particular view of history, that they manage to find ways around through these escape mechanisms. They can apply all those to this as well. Now, on the other hand, they could just swallow their pride and say, you know what? More evidence has come out. We said before that the preponderance of evidence at the time was that these were just apes. But we've reexamined this. We've taken a closer look at the bones and we've decided that we can interpret these as being human beings. And along with the evidence of burial, fire and uh, artwork or something like art, right and possibly stone tools as well so technology put all that together now the preponderance of evidence is that these are actually descendants of noah and so we'll change our minds and we'll say that publicly that's going to be really hard for them to do 
uh, really hard for them to do because they just they were so confident in their their initial assessment that these are fully ape based on their own conceptions of what they expected to see um, so what do i think will happen i think the former i think that they're going to eh, they're going to quibble they're going to they're going to they're going to write an article if they write an article at all for one thing i think they might delay all this but if they are in an article in the next week or two, I think it'll come down and like, well, you know what? This is interesting, but we need to wait. Because these are just preprint articles. They haven't been peer-reviewed. That's another excuse they could use too. Uh, you haven't, these haven't been peer-reviewed. Maybe some other scientists will look at this and realize that the evidence isn't as strong as they think it is. Um, and so we'll wait for the peer review. But even so, there's more data that needs to be collected. And the papers actually say that. The papers say this is like a preliminary analysis. Like, here's the first observations we've made. I think we need to bring everyone's attention to this. But we're going to continue to explore this. There's many other. They hint that there's a lot of other stuff to be found, right? Which usually means that it's already, some of it's already been found. They just haven't collected enough data to be able to report it yet. And so we're going to wait until we get the full set of data. And they'll take the high road we're not going to judge we're going to wait for a full set of data before we before we decide uh, what to call this whether it's human or fully ape now it didn't stop them from originally like up and just saying what they thought uh, but i think they're going to be a little more introspective now because i know that i'm sure that they're concerned about their original call but they don't think they want to just flip on a you know on this one report and change their minds Okay, that's it. Yeah, working without a script or thinking about what I'm going to say, I'm 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 babbling a little more than usual. But you know, that's what unscripted duff is going to be. It's just going to be, eh. Here's my here's what I'm thinking. So, one other little quick thing here: Homo floresiensis, which is the Hobbit uh, from Indonesia. Answers in Genesis uh, pretty much right away called that a, a human. They just said, well, that's just a, a type of human, even though it has a very tiny skull uh, and is a very diminutive individual. But then again, we don't have lots of individuals, right? We just have the one individual, and they could kind of call it a pathological human being, right? It's got a genetic problem. Uh, but what really tipped them over, I think, was the fact that there are stone tools found there. In other words, there's technology found in that particular genre. It's right, and that, and it's obviously upright walking as well, and it has a number of modern human anatomical characteristics. Um, but it also has a bunch of weird characteristics too. But they very quickly sort of pushed it over into the fully human category. So I was really fascinated to find that they pushed Homo lady into the, yeah, that's just an ape. I mean, Ken Ham is just, it's clearly just an ape. I mean, there's nothing clear about that. So it shows that he really does weight the cultural and technological aspects of finds very heavily because that's what was lacking in the original discovery of Homo lady. It was just, just bones. It was a huge mystery. Like, it's just some bones. It's a lot of bones, too. How could you find a lot of bones and nothing else? Um, but I did think Answers in Genesis was taking a big risk by just saying they're just apes. Because more was yet to be found, and sure enough, more was found. And now Answers in Genesis has to figure out, and Ken Ham has to figure out, what's the strategy going forward with Homo Lady? Eventually... They're going to come around, might take a while, but they'll be wrapped into the biological diversity of post-flood humans, post-flood descendants of Noah. All right, that's it for me. I look forward to seeing what Ken Ham says, and when he says something and other young earth creationist uh, organizations respond as well, I will report on that on probably an episode of This Week in Creationism. Oh, the big winners in all this? Clearly the Young Earth Evolutionists, or what Ken Ham calls the Young Earth Evolutionists. They're the ones that were more had a more open mind with respect to looking at the data and realizing how similar some of the features were to humans and saying to themselves, we have to put this into the human category. 
um, and widen our, our understanding and definition of the expanse of what it means to be human or a hominid. Uh, and so the young earth evolutionists have been vindicated in this sense that uh, their call for what they're related to um, has been more accurate than the answers in Genesis and ICR model. Okay, let's quit there. Have a good day. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. If you're still watching this video, well, congratulations. You've successfully made it through one of my videos. But seriously, I want to express my gratitude you know, for you choosing to spend your valuable time with me. Your support really does mean the world to me. I've been creating these videos and it's been a remarkable experience. Not only because I had the opportunity to maybe share some of my knowledge and insights with you, but also because I consider myself a perpetual learner. By making videos, I am learning along the way. And I would say that I am in a relationship with you, the viewer. You know, together we're embarking on this lifelong journey of exploration, right? We're delving into the wonders of the physical universe and beyond. So if you found value in the content that I shared today, I'd really appreciate it if you could show your appreciation by, you know, give me a little like and a follow. Your feedback also and your engagement are really essential to me and it helps me improve and to grow, as I said. So best wishes to you wherever you might be and whatever you might be doing right now. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.